you pack your child's backpack thinking they're ready for school, but some of the items inside could disrupt their hormones or even affect their brain development. And because exposure starts the moment that school begins, every day that you wait means that these chemicals keep impacting their tiny bodies. I'm Dr. Yvonne Burkhardt, and as a toxicologist and a mom, I have spent decades studying how everyday chemicals affect our health and how you can protect your kids. In this video, I'll reveal the three most common back to school items hiding these risks, plus the simple swaps that protect your kids without adding stress or breaking your budget. So you can send them off to school confidently knowing that their gear is safe and you can finally stop worrying about invisible threats that you can't see. Imagine sending your child to school thinking that everything in their bag is safe only to learn later on that the backpack or lunchbox that they're using every day could be slowly harming them. How can something so ordinary be a health risk? Let's take a typical soft-sided lunchbox, for example, one that you might grab at a big box store like Target or Walmart. They could be colorful, cute, and maybe even have their favorite character on the outside. The outer material feels maybe like a coated fabric, but the inside has that smooth, wipeable, insulated surface that we love. It seems convenient, but it's often loaded with phthalates. In order to understand why that matters, let's look at what these chemicals are actually doing and why they can be a high risk for kids. Phthalates are chemicals that are used to make plastics more flexible and they are really common in vinyl coated backpacks and lunch boxes. But here's the problem, phthalates are endocrine disruptors. That means they interfere with hormones which are the body's chemical messengers and they're needed for growth, development, and like I said, even brain function and immune function. Studies link phthalates to reproductive issues and developmental problems in children. And now here's the part that every parent needs to know. Daily contact with phthalates adds up, especially for kids. So just imagine their little hands that are gripping the straps, throwing their bag over the shoulder, or leaning back on it during a story time. Every squeeze, zip, and toss warms and rubs the plastic and the heat and friction encourage these chemicals to leach out. And over time, these invisible exposures are settling into their bodies as they're growing, layering on year after year, day by day, during stages when their brains and hormones are the most vulnerable. So instead of the vinyl coated lunchbox, choose a cotton or canvas bag with a food safe liner or a stainless steel bento box that never touches plastic. My favorite are these stainless steel bento boxes. These are made by Lunchbots and basically it ensures that there is no plastic ever touching my kids' foods. So the inside of the lid and the entire surface is made completely out of stainless steel. I have seen a lot of bento boxes that are actually made out of a plastic lid. So the part that the food sits in is stainless steel, but the lid is plastic or silicone. And I personally don't feel that this is the best option. So I'm looking for stainless steel and completely top to bottom stainless steel lunch boxes for my kids. And that's what I have found with Lunchbox. Also consider backpacks and lunch boxes that are labeled as PVC free or made from natural fabrics like cotton or canvas. And stainless steel lunch boxes, like I said, are my top picks for cold foods and also the containers that have lids, kind of like a thermos for hot foods because my kids sometimes do prefer hot lunches. So we like to do cold lunches in the bento box that I shared and then hot lunches in the same brand, lunch bots. They have a food container that is stainless steel throughout on the inside and even the underside of the lid where your food is stored is also stainless steel. And if you go to any store or go online, all of the lids that I've ever found have plastic underneath. And there's actually a phenomenon of condensation where the heat from the food will cause condensation and could contribute to leaching from the underside of the lid, which then drips down into the food that your child eats. So in order to ensure that that isn't happening, I'm so glad that I found this Lunchbots screw top thermos container because it's a unicorn. I looked, searched everywhere, and this was the only one that I found. So 10 out of 10, this is what my kids are using. Switching to reusable bottles also feels like a healthy choice, but what if the bottle that you picked is actually leaching chemicals into your child's drink? 
I mean, we see it everywhere, right? There are kids with bright cartoon covered bottles clanking against each other as they're running around and taking sips. And parents are smiling, feeling proud that they've ditched single use plastic water bottles and feel like they're making a healthy choice. But sadly, if we take a closer look at the eco-friendly bottle, the story changes because there are invisible particles and chemicals leaching into your child's drink, which turns this well-intentioned habit into unfortunately a hidden risk. And here's where the problem really begins because sips of water aren't just sips of water anymore. They're actually carrying chemicals into your child's body with every sip. And over time that adds up. Polycarbonate bottles, for example, can release BPA. Several studies show that babies who are drinking out of polycarbonate bottles are exposed to BPA. And even I've seen parents leaving their child's water bottle in a hot car. This also encourages leaching. Not to mention polycarbonate is a type of plastic which leaches microplastic particles. So your child isn't just getting the phthalates or the BPA that are coming off of these plastic bottles, they're also getting microplastics. And this is the worst part. The water looks exactly the same. It looks perfectly clear and even sparkles under the sunlight. There's no difference in smell or taste or any other indication that this water is different than what you might've originally put in there. And I totally understand because convenience is king, especially if you are a busy parent and reusable bottles that are marketed as healthy and responsible, but there is a hidden trade-off. So I tried a wall of bottles for my kids and at first I thought they were great, but over time I started to notice things that I don't prefer. So first the straw is plastic. So we never use the straw and I have my kids drinking from the spout. The problem is that it's super easy to spill. The second thing that I don't prefer is that the handle is narrow and it's uncomfortable to hold when the bottle is full and heavy and I can only comfortably fit one finger inside and it isn't the most comfortable way to carry a bottle. And the part that really bugs me is that the cap is kind of made out of a silicone or type of rubbery material. And once it gets dirty, you cannot clean it off. And okay, this is the last gripe that I have. Something that I don't prefer is that the bottle base is a little bit wide, so it doesn't fit very easily into the cup holders in my car, which is not a deal breaker, but it is a little bit annoying and cumbersome. So my favorite bottle that I have ever used is this one right here. This is called the Ello Pop and Fill bottle. And the reason I like it is because it's, first of all, it's got this really wide uh, handle so I can fit several fingers comfortably in it. It's very easy to carry. It also has a locking lid. I like that it has this kind of, um, it has like a silicone spout on it. So it's much more easy to drink without spilling. And then I also like that this is why it's called pop and fill is because you can just pop open this cap right here and just fill it without having to unscrew it. And then the last thing that I like is that it's really um, tall and skinny. So it fits really easily in my cup holders. All of the parts come apart easily so you can get in there and scrub and make sure that there is no mold growing. And one of the things that I also don't prefer, unfortunately with the Awala, as you can see, it's not my favorite is that the silicone gaskets on the inside are a dark gray color. And as you know, mold is black. So it's almost impossible to tell if there's mold growing on there unless you look really closely or if you shine a bright light on it, you might be able to see a difference. And recently I just noticed there was mold growing on one of my kids' water bottles with the Awala. So just be really, really, really careful if you're using those make sure that you are taking them apart completely and cleaning them every few days because mold can grow really quickly in them. So the simple switch to the Ello Pop and Fill eliminated the microplastic risk and it also solved the usability headaches and issues that I had with the other brand. And so now knowing that every sip is free from hidden chemicals brings a huge sigh of relief and peace of mind. Of course, it saves tons of stress and money because the bottle is durable, it's easy to clean, and it's kid friendly. And I plan on replacing my kids' bottles when the time comes with the Ello Pop and Fill. Another hidden source of toxins in kids' back to school gear are stain resistant or waterproof clothing in particular. Studies show that kids' uniforms contain PFAS chemicals, and PFAS chemicals are actually what are used to create that waterproof effect. And unfortunately, that convenience comes with a huge toll on our health because PFAS are known as forever chemicals because they take 
seemingly forever to break down, technically several years once they enter your body. They've been found in rain gear, yoga pants, nonstick cookware, grease proof liners for foods, so many other places. But in terms of kids back to school, be on the lookout for waterproof gear in particular. These PFAS chemicals are linked to hormone imbalances, weakened immune system, and even higher risk for certain types of cancers. The red flags to look out for, as I mentioned, are waterproof, stain resistant labels, and also wrinkle free labels. So these are often marketing gimmicks that are designed to make busy parents feel reassured without actually revealing the chemical trade-offs that are hiding behind those labels. But every single day that your child wears PFAS treated fabrics, they are exposed, whether through the skin, direct contact, dust inhalation, or even the residue on their hands that ends up going in their mouths if they don't wash their hands before they eat. Instead of those treated jackets or shoes, I personally look for natural fibers like untreated organic cotton or wool. Organic is a bonus. If you can't source organic, if it's out of your budget, plain cotton is fine. They might not repel every raindrop, but at least I know that my kids are safe. And plus they're even more breathable and comfortable to wear. My kids, I send them to school with a small umbrella and they also have rain boots. So I'm not so concerned that they're gonna get soaked. So the takeaway is avoid stain resistant, waterproof or wrinkle free or quick dry clothing that could often be treated with PFAS and instead look for cotton, wool, hemp, linen, or other natural fibers. And I've actually linked some of the items that I bought for our kids below. If these exposures seem small, I know it's tempting to wait until later to make changes, but the timing of these swaps can make a massive difference in your child's life. So isn't it better to get ahead of the risk now? Children's developmental years are when their bodies are the most sensitive and vulnerable to chemical disruption. And pound for pound, kids absorb more of the chemicals they're exposed to than adults. Their smaller size, faster metabolism, and slower detox means that even tiny exposures can have a much bigger and long lasting impact. Daily exposures, even in the tiniest amounts, compound and add up over time. So every month, every day, every year that you delay, those invisible risks continue to stack on top of each other, whereas one quick swap can stop it almost immediately. So by now, you know that these risks exist, but how do you actually protect your kids without turning every shopping trip into a science project? Trying to eliminate every chemical all at once feels overwhelming and exhausting, and it's actually not even necessary. Plus, greenwashing only adds to the confusion when brands are slapping on eco labels and all kinds of claims that don't actually mean anything. So what parents really want is to feel like we're taking a proactive move without living in constant worry. And that's why I focus on one swap at a time. First, I tackled lunch gear, what's coming in contact with their food. Then next it was water bottles and then underwear, clothing, jackets and shoes. And within a few months, our daily exposures dropped dramatically without spending hundreds or overhauling everything at once. Once you know the risks and the safe swaps, protecting your kids from these hidden toxins is simple and can actually be affordable if you shop at the right time. So now you know that hidden toxins are sneaking into your child's daily school gear. And there's another place that they might even be exposed to faster, which is right in your own kitchen. A lot of people think that there are no risks to microwaving your food, but one everyday habit could be adding more hormone disruptors and microplastics to every bite than anything else. So make sure to watch this next video to learn the three microwave mistakes that a lot of people are making and the simple swaps that can instantly make your meals safer without giving up the convenience. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.